today we'll be talking about Italian cinema and migration. As you know, uh, I know that you uh, are very familiar with um, the news uh, related with the Mediterranean basin. Um, so um, today what we will be uh, studying together on Italian cinema uh, in relation to um, migration um, <clears throat> will be uh, an interesting uh, discussion for you, um, which is um, a very interesting discussion for me as well. So I will briefly talk about um, the present uh, um, situation of the Italian cinema and how migration is depicted in uh, some contemporary films. Now, in response to Italy's dramatic transformation from an emigrant nation into the desired destination for millions of immigrants from around the world, images of displacement and migration have become increasingly prominent in Italian cinema over the past 18 or 20 years. Now, we have to note that Italy uh, is somehow uh, around the center of the Mediterranean uh, basin and um, right across Italy are uh, some countries such as Libya, Algeria and so on and uh, it uh, borders with uh, Albania um, and from these countries numerous uh, millions of immigrants try to enter into uh, Italy uh, with the belief that they would succeed in reaching uh, Europe in the long run. And these realities have been uh, sometimes harshly, sometimes in a very ideologically driven and um, purposeful manner. Uh, have been, Such images have been uh, represented in uh, both in uh, print uh, media as well as online media and the cinema especially the Italian cinema uh, started to uh, exemplify the narratives of uh, migrants and migrant communities Along with the stretch of sea separating Spain from North Africa, Italy's southern and southeastern coastal waters have become known as Europe's Rio Grande. Like the river that serves as a natural boundary along the border between the state of Texas and Mexico, these maritime passages are conceived as a liquid frontier separating the rich north from the poor south, which is temptingly open to migrant crossing. So very similar to the case of the United States, where Texas represents the rich north and Mexico representing the poor south. In Italy, we experience the same thing. Italy represents the uh, rich north, whereas the African uh, continent, con the continent of Africa represents the south which is poor. Now, very similarly, Italy itself can be divided or can be uh, explored in, uh, along these lines. Uh, the northern part of Italy is known to be rich, uh, such as the case uh, with uh, Milan, uh, whereas the southern part, uh, like Sicily, is known to be uh, the poor part. And uh, so uh, Italy experiences both um, internal migration from uh, Sicily to Milan, let's say, from south to north, 
At the same time, Italy as a whole experiences migration from the poor Africa to the rich Europe. Now, when uh, we uh, study the case of those migrants, of those who succeed in coming safely to shore, many are apprehended upon arrival, they are confiscated, detained in so-called reception centers, and ultimately deported. And those who successfully evade apprehension head toward the larger urban areas and having found a way to survive, in the interstices of Italian society, they face the ongoing possibility of discovery and expulsion. Given the striking visual drama of the illegal maritime arrivals, Italy's Mediterranean migrants have appeared repeatedly in national television reports over the years and are often sens uh, sensationalized. Um, this case is... Um, uh, true for the case of uh, the cinema, as we will uh, start discussing in a few moments. Now, politically, uh, as uh, you know, uh, there is extreme right-wing political. Uh, there are extreme right-wing political groups in uh, Europe. The xenophobia cultivated by these extreme right-wing political groups gained prominence in several European countries following the end of the Cold War. Uh, and uh, such, an, uh, such a nationalistic or extreme right-wing uh, political struggle found fertile soil in Italy with the rise of the populist party Lega Nord in the regions of the north. The racism expressed uh, by Umberto Bossi, the party leader, and his friends has resonated far beyond the confines of the party itself and has in fact influenced the shaping of immigration policies. Now, uh, we have to note that uh, current immigration policies in Italy and Europe are uh, by no means uh, free from political um, struggle and oftentimes right-wing political groups uh, have a say in the formation of such laws. Now clearly implicated in the construction of identity and difference, cinema has played a significant role in nation building, particularly in Italy. This, however, doesn't mean that cinematic fictions reflect social conditions, create imagined communities, or influences uh, social behavior in a simple or straightforward way. Now here, the term imagined communities, uh, Ahmed, I want you to have a look at this um, term and write a few paragraphs about it because the term imagined communities um, is important not only in the case of cinema but also in, uh, in uh, literature and all other social sciences including sociology and history. So the term imagined communities is important here. Well, uh, if we uh, review some of the Italian films featuring uh, Mediterranean migration, we see that in most of these Italian films, the south of Italy, once the source of uh, vast waves of emigration, is imagined as fortress uh, of Europe. Um, and it is uh, the uh, southern part of Italy is depicted as an initial point of contact with uh, migrants arriving, arriving from other parts of the Mediterranean basin and from more distant locations, locations in the global south. Now, the construction of southern Italy as the portal to a land of plenty that is to say, land of the rich, land of bountiful, contains an irony that cannot be ignored. Because although this um, South Italy 
uh, appears as a, as, as a land of the rich, that's to say Europe, for these migrants. In fact, southern Italy, within the whole uh, geography of Italy, is considered to be the poor uh, part of uh, the country. So that is ironic. Now, uh, Gianni Amelio's uh, L'America, which was uh, broadcasted in 1994, uh, we see the uh, appearance of the first Italian film which alluded to the mass migrations of the post-communist era. Now, the film skillfully contextualizes contemporary uh, immigration in light of Italy's former status as both an impoverished emigrant nation and a colonial power. L'America pointedly contrasts the arrogance of the young Italian businessmen with the desperation of the Albanian crowds and with the spontaneous generosity of the elderly Sicilian veteran who, despite his derangement, maintains the values of a lost peasant culture. So we see that within one film there are uh, layers of um, realities that are open to discussion and contestation. From another corner, Ennio de Dominici's L'Italiano, which was broadcasted in 2003, uh, memory of the Italian occupation of Albania as the backstory for a narrative focusing on a contemporary Albanian immigrant who claims to be the grandson of one of the Italian soldiers of the fascist occupation is represented. Like L'America, to which it alludes intertextually, L'Italiano weaves parallels between past and present, Italy and Albania, but is focused on the experience of an Albanian protagonist, the Italian of the title, and his doomed involvement in a romantic relationship with an Italian woman, um, which brings a very different perspective to the story of trans-Adriatic mobility and displacement. Marras Tornando Acasa takes the idea of uh, Mediterranean affinities in a different direction from most Italian films about migration. Uh, the film foregrounds the chronotope of the sea itself, both as uh, nostos and uh, locus um, of contemporary mobility. Uh, the film depicts in a realistic, quasi-documentary fashion the difficult day-to-day -day routine of four fishermen who, though based near Naples, are forced to sail far from home to cast their nets, ultimately venturing into Tunisian waters. Now, uh, interestingly, in all these films, um, water, uh, because Italy is um, a peninsula, um, water is um, given some symbolic uh, meanings, and uh, it is uh, both the uh, Mediterranean uh, Sea and the Adriatic Sea, and um, water itself with fishermen, with Sicily, uh, and so on. So um, the symbolic messages and meanings are also to be considered when um, Mediterranean cultures in relation to immigration patterns are to be studied in Italian films and in uh, the uh, films of uh, each and all of the nations we can uh, study. Now, Maurizio Zaccaro's L'Articolo, 1994, one of the first Italian future films to focus entirely on an immigrant character, uh, the film sets up as a self-conscious juxtaposition between the Maghreb and Italy. Rather than suggesting a possible fraternity among the subaltern populations of the Mediterranean, as occurs in Tornando a Casa and no, uh, L'Altro, both of which were made about a decade later, Zaccaro's film 
ultimately elicit a sense of cultural incommensurability. L'articolo uh, 2 was in fact inspired by the situation of a Maghrebi immigrant who ran a fall of the Italian authorities when he attempted to settle in Italy with his two wives. Anticipating some of the debates that gained widespread currency at the end of the 1990s, the film implicitly asks, how can the cultural practices and expectations of Muslim immigrants be accommodated in Italy, a modern, secular society with a strong Christian heritage? So with uh, this film, uh, L'Articolo, um, we see that um, studying Mediterranean cultures in the Mediterranean basin uh, in, in the films uh, also incorporates uh, such issues uh, like uh, religion and uh, how religion uh, operates uh, in society, both within one culture as well as in numerous cultures. Vittorio De Seta's Lettere dal Sahara raises similar questions about the integration of immigrants with different faith traditions into the fabric of a predominantly secular society. Now, note that Italy is um, oftentimes uh, articulated and repeatedly described as a secular country because uh, the country has very strong Catholic um, church and although the number of church goers is um, decreasing year by year still uh, catholic values are prominent in especially in uh, the south now this uh, low budget future film which was shot in italy and senegal using high resolution uh, digital digital format self-consciously positions itself in the representational economy of Italy's emerging cinema of migration. In the film's opening moments, the director presents a series of 13 iconic images of migrant journeys and clandestine arrivals, images which by now have a generic recognizability for Italian film and television audiences. This montage of still shots which evokes an epic vision of countless migrants making their artist journey to Italy by land and sea has a calculated effective charge. That is to say, these images can be considered as epic uh, constructions, which evoke feeling uh, of pity uh, and at times fear um, for or in uh, the minds of uh, the viewers. Lettere al Vento, broadcasted in 2003, is an Italian-Albanian co-production. And in this film, an Albanian immigrant who lives in Italy addresses the experiences of transnational dislocation. Now, from a perspective of a different, uh, from a perspective that is different from most Italian films on migration, this film highlights the routine corruption and commonplace tragedies that accompany the perpetual flow of human traffic in the southern Adriatic. Um, uh, and the film recounts the story of a morally upstanding Albanian intellectual who travels to Italy in the post-communist period to search for his missing son, whom he suspects of having joined a criminal organization. Now, the many recent Italian films that highlight trans-Mediterranean crossings and displacements generally avoid taking a clear position on the political implications of unregulated migration. That is to say, there is no single political agenda of these films. Different directors, different scenario, uh, script writers uh, produce or uh, enable producing uh, a variety of uh, films with uh, numerous interpretations and numerous um, different 
uh, sorts of um, viewing and understanding and responding. Um, despite the willingness of some filmmakers to envision Italy as a Mediterranean entity, um, mobile, open and diverse rather than static and impervious, this corpus of films is not entirely devoid of the exclusionary discourses that itself, sorry, that it self-consciously attempts to subvert. It is difficult, for example, to ignore the predominantly male, uh, male patriarchal and homosocial thrust of these narratives of migration. So um, this uh, last sentence, I think, is um, it can be understood as a very, uh, you know, well-known reality related with uh, Italy being a patriarchal society because of its uh, Catholic strong Catholic roots. Um, so these films also portray predominantly uh, males uh, who are in the web of patriarchal realities. And this homosocial entity uh, shows that, again, these are uh, male figures and migration is oftentimes associated with uh, the males in Italian cinema for the last 20 years or so. So I got the content of these um, slides from uh, a novice researcher uh, whose article can be found here. I provided the link below. Thank you for your participation. Remain safe. Love you. Bye-bye.